Thanasis, thank you for your chair. Oh man, I. <laughs> it's an honor. Yeah, it, <laughs> for people who are listening on uh, the audio, he he's actually sitting in my chair, and uh, not much studio. Obviously, it's no studios, but you know, this is where I do my podcast. But uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna learn a lot of things today, I, and and I'm actually very happy because I get to learn how how it feels. You know, I actually feel less pressure. No, <laughs> that's good. That's my job is to make you feel that way. Uh, very excited to talk about. Giannis, the marvelous journey, yeah. the story about your family coming to the States and their rise here in the U.S. Have you had a chance to watch the documentary yet? Yeah, I've watched the, I actually watched like a, like an early version of, of it just to, you know, because I don't, I don't think I have the heart to go watch this like when it comes out. What we're going to do today is we're going to yeah. go through a couple of our favorite clips when we had an opportunity to watch this. Oh, you watched it already? We watched it. Okay. Yeah, we got a first viewing of it. Okay. Some of the impactful moments for us that I think really showcase your family's story and the emotional ride that you've been on <laughs> from Greece to here in the U.S. So we're going to start right away <laughs> with an early one of your brother talking about you and your brothers. Okay. Giannis, he always kind of had that proud dad role. He was like, yo, you guys take a look around. All these people are being scared and, and afraid of, of a group of people for, for doing absolutely nothing. You, um, you, you, um, you want the best for your brothers, no? <laughs> oh, man. It's hard to share uh, stories like that for me. Because I always look, try to protect my brothers in the best, the best way I can. He's, he's, he was young. Yeah. We seldom see that type of emotion from Giannis. Uh, when you watch him, how does that make you feel? I know. I was going to one second. Let me take one. Take one second. Uh, Okay. Like, I know exactly what he was going through his head, and I know exactly what he, how he feels because he, we are the the example of you know just positivity and just trying to change the world and and the culture and how people feel about each other and try to bring everybody together. And um, and I understand that at the moment I know exactly what's going through his head because you know like. Sports is sports. I don't care. You know, I don't... Uh, if, you know, somebody criticizes you about, you know, the sports or how good you are, like, that's okay. But the, the, the situation of you not being able to protect your family or be able to uh, protect your brothers or having a sense of uh, helplessness, not hopelessness, but helplessness, like not have to be able to do something, it's... Uh, it's a feeling that I can't, I can, like, that's why I, I know exactly why he's, he's, he's emotional because he, he knows, like, why is, why is this happening and why does, does he have, he can't do something about it, you know, as a, as a 12 year old, a 14 year old. Fear was common in that part of your life and in this story, in the documentary. Yeah. What did fear feel like for you? Uh, I'm not saying you know I'm not gonna be the guy who says like oh man I'm not afraid and I'm not like afraid. but there's there is a type of different fear when you can't uh, provide for your family you can't take care of your people you love and the people around you and not only that not as a we had that we had, the crazy part is that we have that we had that feeling since a young age you know people usually get that feeling when they have kids and when they grow up and they become adults and they kind of move on in life but I had that feeling since I was like. We have, had, we have had, had that feeling since we were like 10 or 12 because we had to, from a young age, to feel that way for, in order to be able to fight through every day. So the overall feeling is that, you know, you, you're in a place that, you know, you have friends and people love you, and, but then you have like certain ways, certain, certain things that you don't understand the same at that time. You're like, well, why is this happening? Why is, you know, why? Either you treat you get treated different or whatever the case might be, you know, and I think 
is for me you hear what he said even in the video like he it's not about him if it was him it's cool it's okay to me but to my you know somebody who's He's younger than me, or little, um, you know, just just a just a kid. It's it's different, and especially I feel I fear most more mostly more for them than me, for my younger brothers than me. So, what type yeah. of responsibility did you feel for them? That I have to be on better to this day. The same thing, same thing. I don't, you know, I, my um, even like you know, sometimes people would be like, oh, Thanas, I know, like. You know, Giannis is, I mean, he's a big dude. I mean, he can, you know, if he gets fouled, then somebody hits him or, you know, we play the games and he's a big dude. Like, he can handle himself. Like, I'm not, I'm like, no, you don't, I don't think you understand. And I think if they see this documentary, they'll understand a little bit more why we're, we are the way we are. And, and you know, my dad's not here at this time, but, you know, my dad, how would my dad look at me? You know, how would my dad respond if I, if I let just anything happen to him or anybody just do anything to him? He's not here, like him looking at me from above, he would be so disappointed and so frustrated and, and so, and he would feel a sense of uh, pain, really big pain. I'm not saying pain as in, you know, if I'm not getting my grades or I'm not uh, the prodigy or the the best in the world, but mostly a pain of like the values. This is not what we do. This is not who we are. This is not how we're, this is not how I raise you. This is not, uh, this is not how it is to get in front of everybody before anything else. And then whoever is next, and when you're not here, somebody, the, you know, the other guy's next. And when he's not here, they, they, you know, they know what it, what, uh, what it is, so, yeah. How often do you still think about your dad? Every day. Every day, there's no, I look at the mirror, I look at my, like, I, I really look at my, like my dad, especially when I have, like, short hair, like, sometimes when I, like, cut my hair and I look at the mirror, I, like, think about him every day. And... You know, I think not only about him, and, and the more I grow up, the more I understand, like, so many things I, I re, not regret not saying to him, but, because regret is a big word, but just, like, didn't have a chance to say to him and say, like, you know, because, you know, growing in a different culture, and uh, and especially, you know, born and raised in Greece, from, uh, uh, you know, my mom and dad is uh, African and Nigerian, and uh, born in that kind of home, but didn't really have the, the the sense of body body like I was that like my daddy was not my best friend you know I do have the relationship like uh, this is my best friend and we're gonna go kick it and have some drinks still okay I got older when I got older it was kind of different but I'm saying to that point where I was like there was a lot of things that you know we wish I could I could tell them you know like what like what first of all I wish I could tell them one thing that uh how hard it is. Like, I would literally want to say, like, there's so much respect I have for him, for him and my mom for how, like, how they raised us and how much effort they gave just for us to, like, you know, keep our heads down and just, like, uh, be nice to people and uh, and just, and don't re retaliate and not be, and don't be vindictive and just don't, like, just don't care about what people say in general and just, like, really be positive. And everything because I think I don't think people realize this. It's not just it's not us. We grew up like this. Yeah, it's not us. Like you see, it's not us. You see guys, you see people who are in our age and younger or older, just you know, and and you would be quick to say, oh my God, this guy is an idiot or he's a or a hole or however you want to call it. But it's not just him. It's how he grew up. It's how it's his surroundings. Who he's who he hangs out around with. Because if I if I give an example, the, the, the biggest example is this. If he's a nice guy and he he hangs out around by guys and and then they get to talk however they want to talk and disregard people and be disrespectful, even though if he's respectful, he's still gonna he's gonna he's gonna start this is gonna start rubbing off on him, you know, just like being the same way. But if you surround yourself with people who act the same, you know, be respectful, be humble, and why would I why would I be why would I be disrespectful and my dad won't and my mom wouldn't? My dad never came to, like, my dad has never said nothing about basketball. Has four sons who play professional basketball. Who make, like, has this for a living, made this for a living, not just play. You know, people who just play basketball. Played in the NBA. Won championships, all of us. Won championships. And he never said the word. Why do you think that because is? Because he did, does not, does, wasn't his style. He was never the, 
first, I remember with, even my first agent, when I first had an agent and uh, and he first came, and you know how it is, and I'm gonna keep it real with you, the, like the agent and parent the relationship is different, you know, like even in the US, and it's not just the US, it's just around the world, like what are you gonna do for my kid? And if he's gonna do this, and he's gonna do that, and, and I need him to be in a good team, I don't want him to get paid, and none of this. I is was the 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 and one of my agents, I don't want to you know say his name but you know when my dad passed away I was crying they were like all of them but we were crying they were crying they were like I'm crying I don't wanna I don't wanna do this but they it was so emotional because he said like one of the best players that we have like his dad never said anything never said why my kid and what are you doing and never said anything. He would see us, would see, you know, would meet during the summer, national team, whatever the case might be. How you doing? How's the family? And everything. And they would want to talk to him, like, hey, uh, I'm going to do this for you, for your boys and your son. And we might do this. And he'd be like, oh, okay, thank you. And just, you know, take care of them because they, they I know they look strong, but they're sensitive. Like, take care of them, you know, they are. You know, t- t- stuff like this. So uh, it's a different type of level of, like, that you get to, you know, it's just, to, to appreciate kind of, and it's unfortunate to appreciate when he says that he's not here. So, one of your most impactful sound bites in the documentary was talking about your parents in Greece and you saying you never saw them eat. Yeah. What was that like for you? And how important was that in your journey? When you think about your life as a parent now, not struggling for a meal, to think about you never seeing them eat because of the sacrifice they made for you guys. Oh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, I think. I think what is crazy? What's crazy is us normalizing it and thinking now that, oh, my God, I never saw the meat. That's the crazy part. The crazy part is not when it happened. When it, when it, when it happened so much, that you normalize it. You say, okay, this is how, you know, and, and then you go like, when did I see meat? Like, or would they wait or would they, you know, and, and again, it was, it was, that's what, I'm telling you, that's why we are the way we are. And I don't think, you know, it's, it's not by design. I didn't, I didn't wake up one day and said, you know what, I want to be this kid and very hardworking and uh, God fearing and uh, just like, and you know, I won't go out of my way. I just want to, you know, because nobody's perfect. Nobody, nobody's perfect. And we are certainly not me and not what the one says that. But just have this constant self uh, awareness of trying to be the best version of, you, of yourself, even though you don't have anything. You know, just trying to be the best version. They were trying to be the best parents ever. They didn't. They couldn't. They, it was almost impossible. You Did know? they succeed? Yes, hundred percent. To me, it my. It's just, there's no doubt, no doubt. And to a lot of people, obviously, who who watch this, and uh, and you know, my mom is kind of. You know, they're trying, they're trying to get her to write a book, and I'm like, ah, I nah, don't know, write a book, and she's trying, and you know, all these other things, and and she really has a lot. But I'm telling you, it would be, she's she's lived ten lives. I promise you, you would be amazed. You would be amazed. So you know, her her journey here and kids and back and back and forth, all all these things, and now, you know. So, but and that's it. I mean, I can't saying anything more than, uh, you know, how much I love them. The next part of the film that I really want to bring up was a fun part of the film, was the plane ride that you and Giannis took to yeah. the States. Yeah. How much fun were you guys having? Oh, my God, it was, it was amazing. First of all, if you understand, like, we barely flew, like, we couldn't, we couldn't, like, we barely just got in planes and flew around, let's say, the world, let's say, to, to, to say, okay, we're going to the U.S. and, you know, fly, uh, Either um, I think it was business class and just sit down with the seats. Like I might have done, I might have did this like forty times, just up and down, <laughs> up and down. But uh, it was fun. It was great. Um, it was, it was just a, it, it was not weird. I wouldn't say it was weird, but it it was just I, like I never like it was just a look and look again. I would look at this and like, oh my God, it's amazing. And then look at the, another thing and just look like, it was just, everything was just like so new to us that everything was, had to be like analyzed. Like, oh my God, why is this like this? You know what? And then when we landed in the, in the city and uh, 
how much people, how many people was there? And then, you know, like coming from Greece, that we're talking about like now ten years, like a like a decade plus now. I would say like ninety ish, ninety five ish, like oh, people being white. Imagine coming to the states and everybody's to the total opposite, and there's everywhere, and they're just like such a big mixture. And I and I said that I remember when we came to New York, I was like, bro, this is the capital of the world. It felt like you know, it, it felt like the. And I'm not saying as a as a mark as a as a marketing or a market. I'm just saying in general, like the people who are there, are just like the, you know, you can ask somebody, and he might look like he's Asian, and he just goes like, oh, I'm from San Diego, okay, <laughs> you know, and you see somebody and he's like. African American, I'm black, and he's like, oh no, well, I'm like uh, from Germany, and I'm here to, you know, like me. The same thing you ask me, and you're like, oh, you, you automatically assume, like, you know, if I didn't have an accent or something, to be like, oh, this guy might be from Chicago. So like, it's, it's just, it's a different mixture here. What was the first food you tried? I don't really. I think it might have been burgers, or wings. I don't I literally don't remember. No. Is, is that day just a blur to you? Yeah, it's almost a blur. The only thing I can remember is uh, being emotionally drained and then Yanis getting drafted. That's the only thing I remember. And my head couldn't stop, I couldn't sleep for like two days or something like that. That's the only thing I can remember because he got drafted. And I'm like, okay, he's going to be all right. He's going to be straight. And, and I got to go find my own way. And then, uh, wait, actually, people don't know this story, but I actually went back to Greece. You know, and people don't know this story. Like, people usually think, like, oh, okay, he came to the States and then, you know, his brother came here. I'm like, no, I went back to Greece. I was playing, you know, worked out, I was playing. And then uh, I did like, a, and then I found my way through the G League and went straight and became the first player to get drafted over, from overseas to the G League. One of the first players, basically, obviously. And then like worked my way up like that. So Giannis is drafted, mm -hmm. he's in a new city. The next clip that we want to show you was about his first couple of weeks and months here in Milwaukee and the emotions that he had to go through. We had a video guy named Ross, uh -huh. oh, and he sort gosh. of taught Giannis to drive. Yeah, Ross, he's my, he's my teacher. We got to come to a complete stop, very tall. Traffic By the way, the Ross podcast, 48 uh, minutes, is the first podcast I did. <laughs> he's an amazing guy. And guys, just to let you guys know, I drive better than him. Oh. You see him laughing and joking and driving in the car with Ross. Under that was this real sadness. This real loneliness. <clears throat> so your brother came over and he was. By the way, just watching these clips is emotionally draining. By the way, I just want to put this, this out there. Ooh. Your brother comes over and and he's the talk of Milwaukee. He's the talk of the NBA. People are trying to pronounce your last name. He's the happiest guy, but as you heard in that clip, he was actually pretty lonely. Yeah. To be away from the family. For you in Greece, and then I was actually at the time I was actually in Delaware. Yeah, actually, and then you're in Wilmington, Delaware, yeah. getting your shot in the D League. Mm -hmm. D League, yes, D League at the time. Did you experience loneliness? Mm -hmm. How tough was that for you? Very, but that, that's there's the this one of the other things with my dad, which you know I don't know if it's right or wrong, but uh, I was very lonely, and you know it's not like I was uh, 28 years old and. Giannis is, uh, we literally at the same same it's like two years, but like I was 20 at the time. And Giannis was 18, 19 and a half, then I was 18 and a half, okay, 19, 20. But, but yeah, it was very lovely. But I, but I was, uh, I was just, uh, I was just thinking about Giannis and uh, my mom and dad. So I, like I was just trying not to show that, um, that I was lonely, to be honest with you. But not, I was not trying to show Giannis you were lonely, or yes. your parents you were lonely. At both, both because then they got to worry about me as well. So it doesn't make you know what I'm saying. It doesn't make any. It doesn't help at all. It doesn't help. I mean, I understand like it's always good to feel like you're supported, but it didn't. It was not gonna help the situation. I was actually I was actually so lonely that one day we had a day off, Saturday. And I think it, was, it had to be Saturday or Halloween. I, I can't remember, like Friday or Saturday. We had a day off. And I left uh, with bags, and I just went to the airport, like no bags, nothing, and found, found the flight to Milwaukee. Mind you, I don't have a phone. I don't have anything. Because you know, I just got here. I have, I, I, I have a phone, but the phone is like, it's not, you know, like not the smartphone. You know, it doesn't have GPS, nothing. So I go in. 
I I walk. Uh, I remember I uh, I went to the airport I, when I attached Milwaukee. I remember the airport, the the, the baggage claim because in the baggage claim, the um, Mr. John Hammond was there, Herb Cole was there, Senator Herb Cole was there, uh, and they and, and, you know and they had the whole welcome. So I remember I remember when I was like, okay, I go this way, I go to this baggage claim. So I went there and I got a car. I went to like rent a car. And uh, I it was like, oh, you want another car, this, that. And I remember they didn't want to give me a car because I was 20. And they were said, no, they kept saying, like, you have to be above 25 or something like that, like some, yeah. something, something. I was like, no, I, they, because I had an overseas license. So, you know, I had this whole, like, back and forth. I was like, please, and this. And I was like, okay, okay. So I, I ended up getting a car. Did you know how to drive? Yeah, I didn't know how to okay. drive, but I just, I just couldn't get it because... Oh, I had to pay more or something like that. I had to have a. It was it was a situation that we just knew that they were Giannis telling was, me. was not a good driver when yeah, he first no, got he, here. Uh, yeah, but I always already was driving when I was uh, in Greece, and uh, the situation was that this guy was uh, telling me, you know, like I gotta be either above certain age to get insurance or whatever the case might be, and I ended up driving with no GPS to find where. Uh, he lives, and I remember that he lived next to the lake, and it was two complexes that looked alike. So look, look what happened to me. I know this is funny. <laughs> I know you think this is funny. Look what happened to me. So I take the highway. I get to Saint Francis. You remember Saint Francis? Yeah. The, the the old cousin the center. Cousin yeah. center. And I go straight ahead, and I see the street, like Saint Francis. And I see the street. I'm like, oh, okay, this is the street. And the house is here. The house is there. And I go left. And I keep going like for like 40 minutes, 40 minutes. I'm not even joking. 40 minutes. I'm driving and I'm on a, like in Milwaukee now. This is my second time in Milwaukee. I've never been nowhere in the U.S. Like it's my second time in Milwaukee. And I'm just driving around. I have no GPS, nothing, nothing, nothing. And I stop at some point. I'm like, well, I can't do this no more. And I stop. And I told him, I'm like, guys, I'm I'm looking for St. Francis. He's like, oh no, no, you gotta go back. So so I stopped. I got out the car, walked in a pub, a pub or a small bar, like. And I said, small, but it might be two people. Walked in, I was like, sorry, can you help me, please? I'm lost. And, and they were trying to direct me. And this lady was like, oh, no, no, you went the other way. Because I kept saying, she said, you got to go left, left somewhere. And they just keep going back. So I went back. Uh, and then I ended up passing it. But then I went back again. And I found it, like, after a little bit. Because, and he, he, you know, he left the keys for me. And I went up. And, and I saw him for eight hours. And then I left again. First of all, only in Wisconsin can you just walk into a bar and get that kind of help immediately. That's why I love Milwaukee. That's why I love Milwaukee. I'm, I'm telling you, it's different. It's different. It's, uh, what time of year was know. this? Was it in the winter? Winter, yes. So you're driving around streets snow, of Milwaukee, everything, everything. snow, everything. brutal cold. Yes. And it yes. took you hours to find your brother. Yes. What was hours that moment like when you found him? I didn't find, do you understand? I walked in, nobody, so basically he, he, I told him, hey, I'm coming to, to visit. He was like, oh, you're going to come to visit, whatever. He was like, you have devils. I was like, yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'm going to figure that out. And he just left the key for me. So I didn't actually see him when I got there. It was like three. I, like I ended up going there at 1 o'clock in the morning, so with all this drive. And then I just stayed there, slept in the couch, waiting for him. And then I saw him the next morning. And then I, and then I saw him for like five, six hours. We went around, talked, and whatever. And then I just left again. Just went back to How often did you guys see each other? That was it. And then I saw him in, uh, that was the one time I saw him the last season. And then I, then I saw him again in, uh, in Philly. I drove, I drove all the way to Philly from uh, Delaware to see him play the Sixers. S- Sixers. And he had a, like, a, like, a, a great game. You know, he got in for a little bit, you know, they had, I think at the time they had Lighty Drew at the time. So. And the other team had the, actually had the other guy, uh, Michael Kyle Williams. That's what they had at the time, yeah. So, yeah, watched him. What does the name Joanne Anton mean to you? Joanne Anton? I know Joanne. The reason I ask, Joanne Anton worked with Senator Cole, and she was the woman who helped finalize getting your family here. That's right. I want to show you something. That's the email that Joanne sent to say yeah. your family is coming. No, no. <laughs> 2014, January, the beginning of the season, the beginning of the year. It says, we did it. We did it. Unbelievable. You know, you know what's so crazy? The, you know this did it, we did it? it it's a, uh, it's a, uh, 
it, it represents so many things, so many things behind it. And they, I think they, I don't think a lot of people knew how like serious this was, or like how like big this was for for us, and like to be able to be together, not only be together, but just like to to see this through. Because I mean, I know Alex have said this so many times that yeah, that yeah, like he he's telling you guys, hey, if, uh, if I can't be with my father, I don't want to play here or I don't want to be here. And you know, a lot of people just they. They take that lightly because they, you know, because the first thing that comes in mind is the, is, you know, just human nature comes in mind. It's like, successful here. Why would you, it's just the biggest thing you've ever done. You know, this is the biggest uh, uh, stage you're ever going to play on. This is the, you know, the the money, the whatever it might be. But that doesn't matter. Because I've been without it. And the only thing that mattered was my family, you know. So that is... There is a, a big uh, story behind it. When you saw your family in the stands, yeah, I know you weren't there. Mm-hmm. You were paving your own path as a basketball player. What was it like to watch that game? It was a great game. First of all, first of all apart from my parents being there, it was a great game. Was like He really played. Probably his best that year. One of the best that year. And, and I know he was so highly motivated. To, to to play that game, but like my dad and and you know see him cheer, see my mom cheer, and, and my younger brothers cheer. Like imagine my younger brothers, uh, they barely went to to watch like a like a basketball game or like Division One game, you know. And now all of a sudden they're watching NBA games live, and they and their brothers in it, and he's scoring at guys that we love and that we cheered for. So it's 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 dope. What was that like for you that year when you were working your way through the then D League, how hard was that? Uh, it was, I mean, uh, it it was hard, fun, and at the same time, just like uh, just a new experience. It was hard because I was away from my family, and I, and I know like my English. I know everybody says like, "Oh, my English sounds great," and I I barely have an accent, and my English is, you know. But the but it, that was never the, that was not always the case until today. If I have a more elaborate uh, like conversation with you, you can tell like I have an accent, and you can tell that I some words that or slangs which you know which is normal for me that I still don't know, you know. But uh, at the time it was that was the one area like the the language barrier. Then the the other area was just like getting used to the culture. The way I was brought up with basketball was like. You have one job, you know. You, do, you play defense. You do this. You do like you. You had like you were put in like a certain way of. You know how like overseas. That's what you see overseas players come in the league because they are put in a, in a in a path and in a direction early. So they like they come in and they're good at some, like something specific. But when I came in, on the time, everybody was everything was everything. Like everybody was doing everything. Like I was like, oh my god, this guy is. They're posting them. They're shooting the ball. They. There are these guys who like doing mixtapes, they're signing branding deals. That, because it was never like that. Where I'm from is you first you play basketball, and then when you retire, you start doing everything else. But here it was more like, hey, you can get your business going, you can do all these things. So I kind of that, that was the culture for it. And then the other thing that I was fighting for it was the, I wanted to get drafted. I wanted to have that feeling. I wanted to hear my name uh, called, you know? And, uh, and the craziest part is that I wanted to hear my name called by either Philly at the time because I was with the 87ers. And I wanted to hear my name by Philly, either Philly or Milwaukee. But, you know, but which I went to Milwaukee and worked out and it was a great workout and I had like, went on, and that's where I wanted to hear my name from. And I was there that day. Yeah, and, uh, and I ended up hearing my name from uh, the Knicks, New York Knicks, which happened to be my first workout. And it's, it's so crazy. We didn't have a conversation. No, but let me not, let me not lie. I, we didn't have a conversation as in like, I hey, we're gonna pick you and this and that because usually they they have some conversations like that. But the only conversation I had was with Mr. Phil Jackson at the time, who was the Knicks, and said like, like you have the tools like Dennis, Roman, Trevor. I already had Aris at the time, Rodman, and he was like, I want like you the the perseverance, your character, like how dynamic you play, and this like this is what we see in you. You know, I, and and, I th- I, and he told me, like, he didn't say I was going to draft you. He just said, I want you to work towards that. You know, I want you to work towards that. That was it. And then I ended up going to, to the Knicks. <laughs> Do you ever think about how different your family's journey would be if 
your family didn't get to Milwaukee that quickly during Giannis's oh, rookie 100%. season? Oh, 100%. 100%. It's a fact. It would be different. Well, of course it would be different. You know, you would be one of those guys, that you, see, you see them every day, like, oh, what? This guy always decide to leave or go back or go to another team. Why? And or, you know, it's, which I understand, but uh, but at the same time, it wasn't, I think that it was a it was a mutual love for Milwaukee, for Milwaukee towards Giannis, from yeah, from towards the family, from from the family towards Milwaukee for getting like trusting a kid to you know with all like just to to say okay I'm gonna draft this kid. Everybody's telling me like he's not ready and he's that he's not the the possible, but I'm gonna draft him regardless. And I, and let's see, it's a bet. It's a, it's a bet. It's a bet we're willing to make, you know and. Worked out. I'd say so. Yeah. I want to fast forward a couple of years to another part of the film that I think is going to shock a lot of people when they see it, that your brother contemplated leaving early and retiring yeah. from basketball. So I'm going to show you that clip. I said, I don't want to play no more. I don't want to play no more. There's no joy. It's torture. I thought he was going to quit. I thought he was done. I thought he wasn't going to play anymore. Hmm. Uh, How often did you guys talk about that? I mean, we didn't, we didn't talk about it every day, but it was more a situation of like, you know, just, uh, I think it just, it was, it was just like, uh, it was, I think it was just taking too much toll. Much tall and uh, and the and, and the situation with with COVID as well. Like like that was our year. Like I think the year I don't people don't remember this. Like that year we were supposed to go to the all the way, you know. And COVID happened and uh, we ended up going to to the bubble. And you know half of the guys wanted to play, half of the guys were not ready to play. You know it was it was just a different like dynamic. And and all of a sudden we come right back, and now we're playing and we're playing with no fans. I play with no fans. We got to we got to go out there and win, and nobody's out in the streets. And we, you know, like I'll give you an example, right? You start playing, you play basketball, and you're in this. You first start. What if, what's the first thing you do? When you start playing basketball, like when you just touch the ball for the first time, you just dribble around, you're shooting the ball, and first thing you do, you just, you just imitate people out there, and you just make a shot, and everybody goes crazy, and like oh. I, and he shoots for three, and ah, the heart goes crazy. And Milwaukee won again, you know? And all of a sudden, like, that happens. You get hurt, like, during the playoffs. Then you persevere, and you're like, I'm going to fight, I'm going to play. And then you're like, don't worry about it. The season's going to start. The fans are going to be there. We're going to have a support, and we're going to win a championship. And, and if they don't, like, don't even worry about that. And then you start the season not playing, playing. And then... Not playing, what you gonna do, and et cetera. Then before that, you're about to sign like a, you know, a contract, and you and then everybody's debating of like everybody's telling you're an idiot for staying. They don't remember this, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I don't remember. Everybody's everybody's literally telling you an idiot for staying. Everybody's telling you like literally, why did you do this? Why did you say he's an idiot? He will never win. Him and his family and him and well, and et cetera, whatever. I really want to call it. And what would he sign? And he would never win. And that's wrong. And, you know, it, it, takes, a, it takes a toll on you. And, and not because of, uh, I don't know, and I'm not saying that you get to listen to outside voices, but I think like COVID played a role. Because if you said it now, nobody cares, but I'm, I'm, showing, I'm, I'm doing my thing. But I feel like this whole COVID thing, and uh, I don't think he took a toll to people and families, and not only medically, like physically and emotionally, you know, took a toll on people. And I know that you and your brothers were able to be together in the bubble, but not being around the rest of your family. Yeah, no, but, but, it, but it wasn't only the rest of the family. And actually, I'm not going to lie. Like, the bubble, we had it, quote-unquote, was okay because we were there, we got to work, was playing, but we didn't get the result we wanted to get. And and that play pays a toll on you. That's not easy. Like, it, there's steps to it. There's steps, you know, you know, like I heard when he said the interview, you know, everything is not fair, there's steps to it, and you gotta like, you know, steps to success. But there's sometimes that you slip. 
Now, it's not only you don't only walk upwards. Sometimes you slip and you fall, and then you have to get up again. And it's one, one of those moments that you, they decide you get up or you fall. As many as, as how, how many people have done before, in the past. Fall and then just said, I'm done. And then you get up and you say, no, this is what, I, this is, this is what, what the cloth I'm made of, and I got to figure out the way to, to, to get there. But, but I, I don't think uh, this happens if he doesn't feel that way, you know? Why do you think he changed his mind? I don't know why he changed his mind. The only thing I, the only thing I can tell you for sure is that if he had said, when he said that he was done, or he said, like, I don't want to play basketball. And then I was like, okay. Now, I know that's not the typical uh, thing you want to you want to hear from somebody telling you, like, I'm going to walk away from, uh, you know, uh, I got a chance to be, you know, really, really good at this sport and, or, I, you know, I get the chance to uh, be an icon or whatever. I got the chance to do all these things, right? Or we get the chance to win a championship. And, and I said, okay. Because that's not, that's really, listen, in my book, that is really important. I've done it once. I want to do it again. That's really important. But hey, it's not more important than my family. It's not more important than the people I love or the people who, and and seeing them. And you understand that when you, when, when every every time you know, and I say this to people who are gonna listen to audio or watch. Anytime you get to in distress, anytime you feel like, oh my God, this is bad news. Just remember every time you've been in the hospital or every time you your health has been in in the risk, how everything goes out the window. Everything goes out the window. And I'm not saying that you uh, you should live your life like that, but everything else goes, goes out the window. So remember, prioritize. And that, at, the, at that time, I prioritized uh, him. So I'm like, oh, cool, all right, go for it. I and think he, Buck fans are happy that he came back because a couple months later. No, they, but they, you only want to hear something in this about Buck's fans? Yeah. Buck fans are so amazing that they know this kid and our family and everything that they would, they would be like, so like they would literally have like a like a they would be out here saying like how oh, how can we like Giannis please and all these things and try to support him like that's how that's how crazy it is and you don't get to say that by every fan base because every fan base doesn't value their players like that and don't value their 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 their, uh, their teams like that you know but I think like and we gave it and we and we try and we gave it back we like reciprocate the energy and the love by winning and and bringing people out there I, I, and I never knew. That uh, Milwaukee was this was this thing that uh, till we went to the Eastern Conference Finals and we beat Atlanta, came back and when we came out down from the plane, it was incredible. So. so let's talk about that championship run and specifically the final couple of games because I know that <laughs> you were unable to no, all, attend all one game. those all games. One game, yeah. What was Game Six like for you? I don't know how many times I'm gonna say. <laughs> I gotta say this story. Game six was you. You said before that my story is uh, our story is up and downs and roller coaster ride. No, that that was roller coaster ride. Did you watch Game Six by yourself? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What was that scene like? Were you just jumping on the bed. It Were you had throwing the things. It was, it was sad. Like happy, we know what you're fun. like on the sideline at Bucks games. Like you're the most energized guy on the yeah. bench. Was, was that energy inside this room by yourself? Yeah. Well, the hundred percent. It was energy from uh, first play to last play, and you know because I'm, I was uh, on, uh, uh, so I mean, like I had the, uh, so I had the laptop. I'm, I'm sitting in the in room. And I had the laptop. It's on me, and it's getting hot. I'm like, oh, I gotta find a pillow. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I'm, I'm running around, and you know, bucket after bucket. I'm yelling, yeah, Bobby, get. The Rebound, don't let him, you know, I'm saying the same things I would have said if I'm in the bench, I'm doing this. And, and towards the end, you know, it's a, uh, I hear like a huge loud voice, but you know, it's like, it's not lagging, but it's the connection, it, to, to we see it in live, it's, it takes like 10 seconds, 10 seconds. And it's like 50 seconds to go. And I get a text message from Mr. John Horst. Saying congratulations to you, you're an ABA champion. Throw my laptop in the air. It's not, my room was trashed, and so I went to the hotel that I stayed in. I took care of everything. I, everything was trashed. Like it was, I was like jumping around. I first of all, my my phone didn't stop ringing for like three days straight. I couldn't. I was just doing things. But then the, the the next part was even better. You know, I I hear a knock on my door, 
And I open it, and it's champagne, cigars, jerseys, my hat, everything. Everything. I open my door and everybody, and I see, like, but, uh, uh, and, I, and, it, and I told him, like, hey, just make sure, you know, I don't want to get you guys anything or, in the program or whatever. Because I wasn't thinking, but I was just like, just make sure you guys yeah. are good, you know? But just the whole, like, thing is unforgettable. Unforgettable, you know? And, and again, even with the parade, like, it was, it was, it was great. It was, a, it was an amazing feeling. It's like, it's something that I, I get goosebumps. I'll, I'll never forget. But this is what makes you who you are. You know, this is what makes that like, you create these moments. And that's why they keep saying, like, championships and champs. That's why people value them so much. Because, first of all, if it was easy, everybody would have one and everybody would do it. If it was that easy, that's one. But second of all, a lot of things have to align. And a lot of things sometimes have to, like, it's perseverance and perseverance and perseverance. And you heard, we just, we just talked about from... Uh, Milwaukee making a bet to a young kid to if the parents was going to be here, if everything was going to change, to like, he said like, months before the championship, like, hey, man, I can't, like, bro, I can't, just get, it's getting crazy right now, I can't, I might stop playing, to end up winning the championship. So, what does that tell you? It's just this, this how, this how it is, you just got to fight, got to fight. You just got to walk through it, walk through it. And you got the opportunity to FaceTime your brother mm -hmm. too after. Yeah. What was that conversation like? The conversation was like, get your ass here. Get your ass here, like, let's, let's celebrate, come in, come in. Get your ass here. And then I, at the time, I didn't know. So I was like, ah, oh, I don't know. But then they told me I could have went. So that's, that's BS. That's BS. So that, that is, uh, I don't know what you want to talk about. That's BS. Just got to go do it again. Yeah, exactly. Just do it again. Do it again. So. If we get a chance, you know, in the in the in the next uh, like in, a, in the next span of our career, do it again. It would be it would be nice. And the one up, my brother Costas. It would be nice to one up him because he did it first, so it was kind of was kind of hard. But then we did it, we did it as well. So it was, it was cool in the family. So nobody could could have bragging rights now. But now, if we do it again, we will get a chance to one up him. So I want to end with this. Yeah. We talked about your family's journey over here, the emotions you felt throughout the bond that you guys still share to this day. Who is the biggest hero in your family's story? It's two of them. It's my mom and my dad. We're just product of all that. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, I'm talking about the, even the documentary now or the Disney movies, some, some people have, saw, see, have seen, I'm sorry. I think um, they understand it's not about basketball. It's not about sports. It's a different meaning. It's a different. Uh, it's a different connection. You understand that it's not about that. It's it's the lesson here is different, you know, and uh, and how and that and how the way you act and the way you carry yourself and and the hard work you put, how, how much is gonna trickle down to, to the next generation. So, what's next for you? What's next for me? I mean, apart from basketball and everything, hopefully. You know, we, we do our, we get to do our thing. We have a great team, you know, great coaching staff. We do, we're, we're working towards that. We're training towards the right direction. But uh, sure, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I love, uh, I told you, like, now I'm, uh, you, you have my seat, so I'm, I'm kind of in the, the, the podcast thing and, you know, and, uh, and that uh, realm, which I think I'm, uh, I'm really, I love it, first of all. You know, like, you know some people just do podcasts just, you know, as, as a business and whatever. I, I love podcasts. I, I, I love it not because I love to be out there. I love it because I love to learn the stories. I learn the culture. I get educated, you know, everybody. And I think like everybody in this building, uh, as well as the people who are watching, listening, have something to give. And they might not think they do, but it's honest fact. You know, my dad and my mom, they didn't, they didn't go to Harvard, Oxford or MIT or something like that. But what they, what they have to give and, and the lesson is it's big. So you get to understand like everybody has something to give. So I, that's the, the the thing I want to do with the podcast as well. I want to learn. I want to get bit like I want to learn from people. So, well, Thanasis, thank you for letting me sit in your chair. <laughs> it's yours again. Appreciate thank the you, time. Hopefully, hey, hey, and please, uh, I want you to promise me that you are, I'm gonna get you in this seat. Uh, hopefully, the this season get you in this seat. And, uh, I have a far less <laughs> interesting story than you do, but I'm happy no, to no. share it in any way. The, the, see. I just said you have you have something. Okay. Your job is to bring it out of I'm me. Gonna, I am, man. All right, Vanessa. Thank you again. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you, brother.